Good morning, you guys. It is early. I am tired, but that's okay. We're gonna get through this. I'm excited to be bringing you guys along for the next several days of my life. We work the next three days in a row, three 12 hour shifts in the emergency department. Today, I'm actually working a day shift. I picked it up. So I work from 6.45 in the morning to 7.15 in the evening. And then my two shifts after that are from 11 in the afternoon to 11.30 at night. So I've got a good feeling. I think it's gonna be a good stretch of days, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, I'm excited to bring you guys along. So I need to head out. We need to get the show on the road and have ourselves a good first day back in the hospital. anybody else's dog shedding like crazy because he is shedding so much it's killing me anyways i just took the coziest warmest longest shower ever changed into some comfy pjs and made myself a little hot cocoa so we are going to wind down it's actually kind of later than i was wanting it to be i went to the gym after work and then chatted with my parents for a bit and then I took camper on like kind of like a little late night walk which was kind of scary but kind of nice because um, we just had a full moon so the moon was big and beautiful and the stars and it was it was a nice cool crisp walk but by the end of it I was super cold which is why I spent like 40 minutes in the shower and that's okay sometimes you need that anyways I wanted to give you guys a brief update on my day today which was actually pretty good i don't normally work day shifts i work a mid shift from 11 in the afternoon morning ish to 11 30 at night um i think that's one really great perk about being in the emergency department because it's the only unit i know that does that where you have mid shifts available so you don't just simply have your night shift and day shift you have a bunch of different mid shifts where i work we have a nine o'clock an 11 o'clock a noon and a two o'clock and those are all times that people come in because we just get really busy throughout the day i think the er can be a place where you have the opportunity to move out of a shift or a pattern if it's not fitting you well whereas on almost every other floor that i know of in the hospital setting um you have to pick between nights and days so anyways i worked a day shift today which i like day shifts because i feel like they go by much quicker and i've always preferred being up earlier when the sun goes down i'm ready to wind down so i have some exciting news um that i'll be sharing with you guys soon i mean i guess it don't have to share it soon i can share it now i am switching to day shift in the near future so um i'm really excited for that actually in like two weeks i will be switching to day shift so we're not going to go into that right now we'll talk about that at a whole other time but yeah today was a good day especially because honestly i was a little bit nervous going to work um because i've had some time off and <sighs> You know, I've been on the struggle bus, um, to be completely transparent. I've, I've had a hard week, two weeks, um, and I missed a little bit of work. And so it's always kind of nerve wracking to come back when you've been gone for an extended period of time because you feel like am i gonna forget everything like am i gonna be able to start this iv on this patient but um everything went pretty well i took patients all day i probably had like a good split between admits and discharges 
I didn't have any patients that were admitted to any of our critical floors like ICU or IMCU um, but it was pretty busy uh, pretty task oriented day gave a lot of medication started a lot of IVs I just had a moment of gratitude and appreciation for where I work and the people I work with and how I feel supported and comfortable asking for help when I need it and like I have a support system, I have people that I can talk to even though sometimes that feels like you're going through things alone, you really just aren't. Um, and I wanted to <laughs> briefly touch on something that I've been going through and I think it's really important to share. Whether you are looking into healthcare, looking into working in the healthcare, whether you're in school right now for a healthcare position, whether you're about to graduate, maybe you've already started working, maybe you are currently working, um, I think something that is so, so important and I'm like really realizing the weight, the gravity of the importance of it is when you have a career where you are helping people and you are there for them and you are fully taking care of them which is amazing however in order to do the best that 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 you can do you have to remember to fill your own cup you have to remember to prioritize your health and well-being your mental health your physical health your happiness moments of joy and we just see so many traumatic things or maybe they're not even quote-unquote traumatic it's just things that you witness or that you're a part of maybe in the moment when it's transpiring at work you don't realize how much it's going to affect you and then three weeks later you're crying on your bathroom floor and it's all coming up because it's going to come up one way or another and yeah that's really what i'm going to say like things <laughs> feelings and emotions and these experiences that you go through when working in healthcare and probably so many other jobs but i'm only speaking on this because this is where i work um it's gonna come up one way or another it's it's not if it's when and you need to be able to handle it um and that kind of sounded harsh you need to be able to handle it you don't need to be able to handle it you're going to figure out how to handle it because you're going to have to get through it but i think it can be trial and error of figuring out how to cope with certain things and the the big point that i want to make <laughs> is please make it a priority to Find those resources, those people that you can talk to, those activities that you can do, those places that you can go that calm your mind, that ease you, that make you feel good, that make you feel warm, that make you feel happy. And know how to get to those places easily so that when you do have these moments that come up, because they will, you know how to handle them, you can tackle them you can get through them and you already have this network and system set into place so that when things come up, you've, you've got it. You know what to do, you know where to go, you know who to talk to instead of feeling extremely alone and um, isolated and all of the other fun things that come with that. So I really hope that that made sense. <laughs> it's late and I'm tired but <clears throat> to summarize I'm just saying this is a tough profession it's a tough career and I'm only a year and a half in and it's frankly kicking my ass and um I've been like having you know a hard time coping with things and I haven't had all of these things set into place to handle them properly and it's it's showing you know that I really need to start taking better care of myself and if you can get ahead of that I think 
that that can be amazing. Um, so this is just my reminder to you that you have to take care of yourself every day. You've got to do something, whether it be something small or the whole day dedicated to just like showing yourself grace and love and gratitude. It's just so, so, so important. So yeah, that is my late night running on my 17th hour of being awake chit chat. <laughs> Anyways, today was a good day and I am just thankful for a good day. I'm thankful for relatively healthy patients. I'm thankful for my dog that doesn't want to cuddle with me right now. It's okay. I have it at like 76 degrees in my house, so that's probably why. Anyways, I am going to finish drinking my hot cocoa and then hit the hay and I will see you guys in the morning. We work from 11 to 11.30 tomorrow night and I'm thinking I want to take camper on a walk outside and then go on a run and have a nice, nice, easy, peaceful morning. So see you guys in the morning. Good morning, you guys. I just finished getting ready for work. All I need to do is pack my lunch, make my coffee, fill up my water bottle, and then we are going to head out for shift two out of three. I got a good amount of sleep last night. I took a camper on a nice, crisp morning walk, and I'm in a good mood. I think today is going to be a wonderful day. Something I forgot to mention yesterday was yesterday was a Monday. And if you guys know, you know, Mondays are notoriously, objectively, <laughs> the roughest day in the ER. So yesterday was a really good, mellow Monday, all things considered. And I feel like that's just going to roll into Tuesday, into today. Today's going to be a great day. We're not going to have a lot of patience. Things are going to be low acuity. People are going to be healthy. You know, just gotta manifest that and put that out there. So, hopefully, that comes to fruition. Anyways, I need to make my coffee. So, I've got my cup here. I usually just make a pot of coffee so I can have a cup in the morning, like on my walk, and then take a cup to work with me. I don't have coffee every day, but I feel like in the winter months, I crave a warm cup of coffee. Or like a warm cup of tea and I just add Trader Joe's brown sugar creamer and then some cinnamon sprinkles on top we also have coffee at work which isn't the tastiest but I have brought like my own creamer and put it in our employee fridge and that's actually been super nice I should probably do that again soon Okay, coffee is made, and now I need to pack my lunch, which should actually be pretty easy. So, I've got my lunch bag there. I made some chicken, rice, Brussels sprouts, and yeah, no, not yams, not sweet potato, butternut squash. So, I meal prepped three of these. So, I'm going to pack that. I got my little lunch box here. We've got a sparkling seltzer water. This is my favorite one I've ever, ever had. It's half tea, half lemon. It's so good, so refreshing, and this is like my favorite sparkling water ever. Anyways, we'll pack that, we'll pack my lunch, and then I think I'm gonna make some overnight oats. I should have made that last night, but I kind of forgot about it. So, 
I have some pre-made oats here. Overnight oats with chia, flax, and hemp seeds. So, I'm gonna do half a cup of the oats. Oh my gosh. Whoops, I just made a mess. I did not think this through, you guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that just made such a mess. I actually don't know if this is gonna be big enough, this jar. We're gonna find out, we've already made a mess, so what's another mess mean? No big deal. Okay, and then I'm gonna do half a cup of almond milk. Oh my gosh. Okay, that fit perfectly. Put some cinnamon on top. And then when I eat it, I will throw a banana with it. And sometimes I add honey. But not today, because we don't have room to add honey in that. So, got my banana, got my overnight oats. What do you think I'm going to grab um, one more thing? I'm actually pretty hungry right now. I might bring some toast for the drive to work. We've got the goods. We got chomps, turkey stick, and little baby goldfish. So, that should hold us over. I'm going to clean up this mess and then pull up my water bottle. I've got my favorite water bottle right here. This has become my go-to the past month or actually a little over a month because it doesn't spill. <laughs> now, as you guys can see, I spill a lot of things. Also, I feel like when we work 12 plus hour long shifts, we can really tend to neglect drinking an adequate amount of water. So I make it a goal to drink three to four of these a day. This is a 32 ounce bottle. I'm also so excited to share with you guys that Ello is the sponsor of today's video. Ello is a company that makes their products safe, clean, and green. And this specifically is their pop and fill stainless steel water bottle in the color Sunset Meadow. It has some pretty great features. So it's a quick fill lid. You can just pop it open like this, fill it up without having to take the lid off like I did earlier. You can also chug your water this way, or you can put the lid back on and sip it through a straw. It will keep your drinks cold for up to 24 hours with the vacuum insulated stainless steel. Most importantly, it is 100% leak proof. It has this little locking portion on the lid. So right now it is unlocked and I can just open it up like that. If I lock it, it doesn't open at all and doesn't leak. Did I mention that it's dishwasher safe? Yeah, we love that. If you guys are interested in checking out Ello and all of their products, specifically this water bottle, I will have a link down below in my description box that'll take you to their website, along with a discount code to get you guys 15% off of your purchase. That discount code is Sierra15. Again, thank you so much to Ello for sponsoring this video, for giving me a discount code to share with you guys, and for my new favorite water bottle. With that being said, it is now officially time to head out drop a camper off with my parents, and head to work for shift two out of three. Good morning, you guys. I am just finishing up getting ready. I didn't talk to you guys last night because I was 
so so tired after work it was one of those days where i drove home in silence and sometimes you need that not for any specific reason um we actually weren't too busy it was actually a pretty calm and mellow day if i'm being honest um but it just kind of wiped me out so i was very tired <laughs> um after my shift and then i made myself go to the gym i mustered up the courage to do that and i was very wiped so yeah yesterday was a good day um i didn't have too many critical patients uh i mostly had discharges actually I had a lot of patients get discharged get some medication some antibiotics for wounds i would say that we have been having a decrease in covid flu-like symptoms so hallelujah for that because that was rough for a couple of months and yeah i'm glad i'm not seeing as many sick people at least the days that i'm working so yeah yesterday was overall good shift uh i was on the front of the er um kind of where our trauma rooms are at and took patients all day yeah nothing super eventful i will say i did have this moment uh, i was talking about with one of my coworkers how we just consistently see you know older people and their health deteriorating because that's what happens when you get older it's inevitable and you see these people in their 60s and their 70s at their retirement age and they're finally able to retire and they physically aren't able to do the things that they could do when they were younger or maybe physically their body is okay but mentally they have dementia or alzheimer's or some other health condition and it just got me thinking about how important it is to just really enjoy your life and be present and do the things that you want to do while your health is there because you never know when that is going to be potentially taken from you and it's funny because we always really appreciate our health when we don't have it when we're sick you know i think i've been inspired to start trying new things and putting myself out there more and living my life for myself and doing the things that I want to do while I can and traveling and having new experiences and meeting new people. Um, I feel very inspired by that. We had somebody who, you know, a year after retirement, one year, they got diagnosed with a debilitating disease. Basically their life as they knew it got kind of ripped from their hands right after they were set to retire and enjoy their life with their family and their grandchildren and I don't know you just never know what the future holds I'm not trying to be negative I mean this in actually a positive way because we gotta live our life for now anyways I am gonna finish my tea I need to put my shoes on head out and go to shift three out of three and then we got a couple days off i'm so excited also i want to talk about my necklace i've worn it for quite some time i adore this necklace it's an organ sunstone and it is made by a small business jeweler named kate she has a company called s for sparkle that's so cute um but i've been wearing this necklace non-stop not taking it off and i love it i just wanted to share her shop with you guys um she has an instagram page and a website i'll have that linked below if you guys want to check it out she hand makes all of her jewelry has a ton of different styles and types of jewelry super personable super sweet out of san francisco um i just love this necklace it makes me so happy so yeah anyways i wanted to share that with you guys um but it's time to head out and we are gonna have ourselves a good last shift
guys. Shift three out of three. It's officially over. Now I have the next several days off, which I am so looking forward to. It's a little after 11.30 right now. And today was absolutely insane. It was a true ER day where we had true ER patients, true traumas. We were very, very busy. So for how mellow the past two days have been, this day for sure made up for that. Um, which you know what? It's, it's okay. We can use a little busy sometimes. It makes the shift go by quicker. Um, but yeah, I feel like I could never really just get ahead. I was doing a lot of back charting. I'd have patients that would be getting admitted and go up to the floor and I hadn't even had time to sit down and put in my assessment or chart that for them. Um, so I was doing a lot of that. We just had a really, really full lobby for the entire day. I think it's now finally slowed down, but it was pretty hectic and chaotic there for a second. Just very high acuity patients right after another or literally three or four at the same exact time. That's okay, we made it through it and we've got a good team that helps each other out and yeah there was a point where i needed an iv on a patient in a specific location we do well we don't do it but ct imaging department it does a cat scan called a ct angiogram with that being said the iv is placed specifically in the ac or within like two inches of it um due to the pressure and the contrast that's needed for that exam and gosh i don't know i feel like a lot of patients i've had recently have been really hard iv sticks like i've been only able to get like a 22 gauge in their arm um which isn't like ideal because when they come to the ER, you don't necessarily know what's going on with them. So you don't know what you're gonna need to give them. And obviously a bigger gauge, at least a 20 or an 18 is usually best case scenario. But anyways, where was I going with this? Oh, um, at one point I was like, I cannot get an IV in this patient. And I there was literally nobody to ask for help with. And um, I don't do ultrasound IVs. I'm actually signing up for a class to get trained to do them, which I'm excited for because sometimes you can really be in a pickle um, where imaging is severely delayed because you are unable to obtain IV access. And you know, that's really ultimately delaying care for the patient because what if the imaging is showing something that's critical, you know? Um, so at one point I had to switch places with the nurse that was out in triage so they could come do the ultrasound IV for a week they're the only nurse that does ultrasound in the department at the time. Um, so that was a little hectic for a second, but it all worked out. I'm excited to do the ultrasound IV class just to have another a little skill under my belt and, you know, be able to do that on my own if I need to do that or also help out coworkers um, if they're having trouble because some people's veins just are literally absent or you know if people are coming to the hospital and they are sick and they're not doing well and they're dehydrated and all of the things like they got nothing for us to even like see um so i feel like we really utilize the ultrasound ivs a lot which isn't necessarily ideal but it is what it is like we do what we gotta do when we have to do it so that's my little spiel for the day. Overall, a decent, a decent shift and a good way to end my three shifts in a row. I'm gonna head home. Mm. Oh my god, that's so weird. I was expecting this to have water in it, but I forgot I put in like a little packet, electrolyte packet that my coworker gave me. It's really sour, and I literally was not expecting that. Anyways, I'm heading home. Uh, I think I'm gonna take a nice little bath and then read and then let myself sleep in as much as I want tomorrow. That's what I try 
to do if I can. What I really like to do is after working three shifts to just kind of have my first day off be not entirely a rest day, but hey, if that needs to happen, that needs to happen. If you need to have multiple rest days, that's fine. But I try to have it be a really low maintenance, easy day where I can kind of take it slow, you know, get my sleep that I need, eat some yummy food, relax, and just kind of add a little bit more pep to my step because this can be very draining and exhausting working these long shifts. I mean, it just objectively is. It doesn't matter what you do either. I think any 12 hour shift in any work environment is just, it's just exhausting. It's, it's a long, long day. We're gonna go pick up camper and then have ourselves a little night.